um, you know, we picked up a coin and we're like, what's the price on this? You know, we've we've purchased coins that have been over twenty five hundred dollars uh, weekly, and he just wouldn't even give us a price. Wouldn't even, you know, we we try to even entertain an offer, and he wouldn't even tell us. He just took the coin from us and put it back in the case. Hey guys, this is Drew with Acoustic Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. Um, in this video, we're gonna be talking about uh, buyer-friendly versus seller-friendly coin shops. Uh, we've gone uh, to many coin shops since going to uh, the Pan Show, which you guys have heard about, um, and also uh, going to Ohio to see some family. Um, I wanna have a little dialogue with my brother Casey. Um, what did you think about the coin shop that we went to yesterday? Um, uh, there are some things that caught my attention, but I wanted to ask you. Well, uh, with our experience, we were taking a new collector, well, a collector that had experienced coin collecting in their youth and was wanting to see what our take was and go and visit some of these shops and maybe reignite that flame that he had for coin collecting during his childhood. and. With this experience, we drove an hour, which is common when you're trying to hunt for stuff like that. And it was across town, rainy day, endless details. But we ended up getting to this shop looking to buy certified slab coins, various types. And what we noticed is, is that the shop was very, um, it, w it wasn't buyer friendly. We weren't shown much of anything. Um, they weren't very cooperative. Well, they kept you, on when constantly. You walked, when you walked in the shop, what did what did what were they trying to sell? Mostly bullion, which we don't have anything against a shop that sells bullion. But when we asked for certified coins, which we could see were strewn everywhere, um, they said, uh, "Check out our website and give us a particular date so we can pull that." It, it, it just seemed like there was a gridlock and we weren't able to make any deals and, and work with them. Yeah, to add on what Casey was saying, we basically asked, do you have any tone more dollars? Um, uh, can we see better dates? And basically all they, uh, they kind of shrugged us off and they said, hey, go check on the website. All of our Morgan dollars are at the pan show, you know? And, and so we ended up looking behind this little curtain and seeing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of coins just laying on the floor, laying on the uh, desk. Um, and so, but it, during that time, people came into the shop, they were selling their bullion, they were, uh, you know, it felt more to us like they didn't want to sell to the public, but more uh, buy from the public. Junk silver, uh, coins. Uh, I think that they were they were open to the public only if they could buy stuff for what they they wanted to pay, um, and so when we went there and our friend came, um, he was just he was just flabbergasted. He couldn't take a look at anything. Uh, we tried to ask about a coin. That coin is unavailable, um, and he was just he was looking at the same picture as us, and he was just like, I drove all this way, and I can't look at anything. I can't buy anything. Um, and so kind of give that, kind of give uh, our audience a perspective on more of a seller friendly coin shop. I know that we went into, uh, the coin stamp shop in Arkansas. What, what's kind of the differences that you see between uh, the shop we went to here in Ohio and the one we went to there? What, what do you feel from that? Well, I think a major difference is, um, them making you feel valued, um, no matter what your intentions are and them looking to please you at at any cost I guess within reason and I think that um, we've seen two sides of the coin and uh, I guess figure figuratively but it just it seems like there's certain shops that can do much better yeah so what 
um, kind of what's the feel like when you go into the coin and stamp shop? Do, what what kind of service do you do you get from them? Kind of. Um, it it feels like no matter how much money you came to spend or how many coins you came to buy, or what you came to sell, um, they're eager to help you. They'll build a relationship with you. They'll be nice to you. They'll be down to earth with you, and they'll point you in the right direction. Versus some of these other situations where they're looking to buy from you, um, possibly mistreat you, and um, then they're they're done with you. Yeah, to add on to what Casey's saying, I think that it's important that there's actually some dealers that look, look you up and down and say, can this person afford this coin? Should I even show them this coin? Um, we ended up going to another shop in Ohio and we asked if we could see their Morgans. You know, can we see all your slab Morgans? Most of the time they have them in cases, you know, NGC, PCGS cases. Um, and the guy just said, uh, whatever's in the cases, I'm going to show you. I'm not going to show you anything else. I don't have time for you. And it's the same exact situation happened. We had five or six different groups of people come in and sell their junk silver. Um, and it felt like the, the coin shop owner was much more happier and excited to see people sell stuff to him than to buy from him. And he knew we were a dealer. We talked about, we talked a little bit to him, but, um, you know, we picked up a coin and we're like, what's the price on this? You know, we've, we've purchased coins that have been over $2,500, uh, weekly. And he just wouldn't even give us a price. Wouldn't even, you know, we, we try to even entertain an offer and he wouldn't even tell us. He just took the coin from us and put it back in the case. Um, so this kind of little conversation, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, we're, we're trying to just give you guys uh, a perspective, trying to give you guys coin dealers that uh, are more seller friendly to you when you go to their shop, uh, helping you actually build collections, going to search for stuff for you. And like I said, coins, uh, the coin stamp shop, I'm gonna put their address right here, um, are, are always very friendly if you guys are ever in the Little Rock area. Um, but uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this part of the video. Let's show you guys the coins that we actually bought this week at these uh, coin shops. Hey guys, we just uh, talked about uh, you know what to do and what not to do as a coin shop. And now we're going to show you the stuff that we actually found from uh, the coin shops that we uh, went to on the way to Pennsylvania. So here's a few raw coins I want to show you guys. This is uh, a 1940, I think it's an S, I'm not too sure, uh, Mercury Dime. I really love the toning on this coin. Uh, I just, uh, with this coin, I don't think the grade matters too much. I was seeing a lot of uh, underlining hits from different coins uh, over the years um, of it. Uh, you know, basically it might have... I think it might have exchanged hands a few times. Sometimes I feel like this coin's a little bit AU, but sometimes I feel it's a uh, it's mint state. But like I said, the color's so nice on it. Uh, I'm gonna have to send that one coin in. Uh, on this coin, this is a 1913. Uh, I think it's just P uh, Type One. I really love this coin. I just I've been really attached to Buffaloes lately, and I got this one for a good price. Uh, another thing I'm going to send an Econ most likely, uh, I think it'll grade high. And uh, the thing about Buffalo is it's just pretty hard to grade these things. Uh, I just, you know, it, it's something that I'm trying to work towards and look at. Um, and in the meantime, it's going to be testing through grading and everything else. Uh, but like I said, uh, I like the coin just because of the toning aspect of it. Uh, nickels, the nickels are pretty hard to tone, especially when there's no silver content in them. Um, Got both of these coins from the Little uh, Little Rock, Arkansas, the coin and stamp shop. Uh, I'll put the address right here right now for a few seconds uh, while I'm getting the next coins. Just so you guys, if you're ever in the area, visit them. It's a dad and son shop. They're really great people. Uh, I'm very fortunate enough to know them. And I plan to do a lot more business with them in the future. And, you know, If you find a good shop, you should go to that shop when you can. And we end up going up north a lot to Pennsylvania and Ohio. So uh, they are the ones that you really, you guys should really uh, stop by and see if you're in the area because they are really good guys. Uh, we also picked this up from them as well. This is an 1893 uh, Colombian half dollar. The coin is cleaned, but um, it was it was picked up for an affordable price, 
and I think that uh, someone's going to find a hole in their collection, either in an album or, or just something that they find that's a little bit unique uh, for the coin. Most of these uh, commemoratives aren't toned like this, uh, but like I said, it is cleaned, um, which is not too much of a, of a problem um, for some collectors if it's just an affordable coin overall. Um, that's another thing we picked up from the coin stamp shop. Here's a little uh, cool thing that we got from an antique shop that we stopped by. This is a 1950 uh, Franklin half dollar. Uh, we took a look at this coin and we project it to be uh, MS65 full bell lines because uh, I mean the luster's not super great, uh, but there are not very many hits in the fields. When you flip over the coin, uh, you know the luster is very nice as well. You can see the FBL, uh, the the full bell lines there um, from the from the full strike. Um, I think we spent sixteen dollars on this coin, and uh, you know what they're selling for right now in sixty-five FBL is around one hundred and sixty dollars. So, uh, just something that you guys uh, can start to you know research on your own, especially when you're in shops. Take your time um, because you could end up making uh, some decent money doing it. Um, and if you know what you're looking for. Uh, and use a few different apps to study grading. Uh, PCGS CoinFax is a good one. You'll end up finding a coin like this, uh, taking a risk on it, and if it goes MS65 FBL, you made some decent money. And uh, that's what I love about coin hunting and also sending coins in. You're training your eye. You're seeing if you're either going to pass or fail <laughs> the grading test. And uh, that's kind of what PCGS and NGC have been uh been been helpful for in terms of collecting because they've allowed people um, to train their eye, get accustomed to how uh, coins are graded, how coins are perceived in the market, and I think that's something uh, we have to take a look at um, and keep perfecting on our end as collectors and as dealers because uh, the more we know, uh, the better off we'll be. Uh, here's something we got from the Akron uh, Coin and Jewelry. This is... Um, a 1946 Iowa commemorative half dollar. Not too, uh, not a big fan of the spots, um, but I do love this this older holder. And the thing that I learned about this holder is that this actually has an outer shell. This is an outer shell here, and if this outer shell breaks off, it actually ends up becoming like a rattler, which is kind of cool. Uh, I love the luster on this coin. I think if they regraded this coin today, it'd be an MS65. Um, and I actually paid full retail for this coin. So I actually pinned, ended up paying $100 uh, for this coin. And uh, we'll, we'll end up shipping this coin for $120 just because um, if you spot a holder like this, it's just a, a rare occurrence. Um, this was basically the crossover between the doily, uh, which is very sought after, and the rattler. So this is this is the, the hybrid of those. And so when you find stuff like this, they don't demand a huge premium. But they are uh, they are still very collectible. Uh, people are looking for every type of set um, with these holders because there's nice coins in them most of the time, and um, they're just trying to pick up a little bit of uh, NGC or PCGS um, history. And this is a coin like that. What we also picked up at the coin stamp shop was an affordable 1892s graded VG10. We ended up actually selling this to someone on the website. Um, we're very thankful. Uh, I'll actually put their name right here, thanking them. Um, th this coin uh, is very original. Uh, it's got a little uh, ding in front of the face there. But we, like we say, we are on a, our on a key date kick. Um, if we can find someone uh, a coin that's a key date for an affordable price, um, that's what we're going to do. I think uh, the customer ended up paying like $83 for this coin, which isn't too bad. Um, they're just harder to find um, in in slabs in this uh, in this worn out worn of shape, um, but a pretty decent coin. Another one from Akron Coin and Jewelry, um, and we ended up picking about picking up two more coins. Here's one of uh, the other coins we picked up. This is a 1946D uh, Walking Liberty half dollar. Uh, the luster on the reverse is very nice. Uh, I really do enjoy the coin. Um, there is some unattractive toning on the obverse, in my opinion, and I think I would agree with this coin at a 64. Uh, this NGC holder also has a very nice green label to it, and it also is in a fatty holder. Um, and I'm about to show you a different coin, but this, if someone ever says fatty, um, this is a fatty holder. You can kind of see these rigid ridges around here, um, the thickness of it, um, but with this, this holder, it's not a fatty. Um, it's uh, just a, basically a non-rim uh, type of coin uh, coin holder they call it, I think they call it the no C rim or something like that 
Um, I'll have to look into it more and let you guys know. But this is the last coin we picked up from Akron Coin and Jewelry. This is a 1932D, uh, very fine 30. Um, it's like we've been talking about, like I'm going to repeat almost every video, is that we've been picking up key date coins um, from different series for people to put in their collections. Um, we haven't really moved into Washington quarters, but we do have a 1932S, 1932, 1932D, all on the website um, for you guys to take a look at. And it might not be available, right? Uh, might not be available anymore because these videos are planned in advance. Um, but like I said, uh, be on the be on the lookout for the website because there are many more of these coming out, um, and you don't want to miss the deals. So we picked up a few more coins from the coin and stamp shop people. Uh, this is a 1892O Morgan Dollar graded MS62. Uh, the luster is very nice on this coin. Um, they offered it to me for a really nice price. Actually, ended up selling selling this coin to a wholesaler. Uh, and and for 1892Os at this you know at this in this current market are are pretty typical um, to be scarce um, in coin shops. Uh, many people, ever since starting the pandemic, have said, "I gotta fi finish my Morgan collection. I gotta finish my Walker collection. Um, I gotta finish my Peace Dollar collection." And so that ends up. Uh, translating into a higher demand and um, a lower supply um, and so the 1892 has risen in price um, and and a, and a blast white example like this is is something that will sell all day long uh, we also have an ms64 example of this um, but the wholesaler stuck with this coin but it's just a really nice coin can't thank this coin stamp guys um, enough uh, they always help us while we're there um, here's two last coins I want to show you in this video. This is a 1940, uh, 1964 uh, Kennedy half dollar uh, sample slabs. Um, just something that we wanted to offer as a variety um, for the website. Um, one's held in a fatty, um, and the other one's held in the you, you know you can't see the rim on it, but um, just two two stunning coins. Uh, we're trying to move into different things all at once, and so sometimes. It's worth just to buy little knickknacks like this, a little piece of NGC history. Um, but I appreciate you guys listening, uh, I guess, to my small rant at the beginning of the video um, and also taking a look at these coins. And I hope you guys do, whenever you're in these areas, uh, stop by their shops because they are really good guys and they will help you find coins that you were looking for. But thank you guys again. Did you guys enjoy today's video? Uh, it was a little bit different. Um, than normal videos are. We had a nice discussion about coin shops and what they should and shouldn't do sometimes uh, with customers. Um, we also showed off a pretty cool uh, amount of coins, but I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, please leave a like, uh, comment, has this happened to you before, um, and subscribe if you guys want to see more coin content. Uh, we have three videos coming out every single week, and I think we just hit a, a thousand subscribers, so... Stay tuned for more.